Hello everybody and welcome back to the GearHead 426 channel. Today we're gonna to go ahead and check the timing and adjust it if we have to on my injection pump on this 2002 Volkswagen Beetle. It is the ALH engine code. So pretty much any ALH from I think it's 98 and a half, at least for the Beetles, all the way up to 2003 are going to have this motor in it if it is a diesel and they're gonna have an injection pump. And this is how you check the timing and adjust the timing. I'm pretty sure my timing is off just a little bit but we'll find out. Things that you're going to go ahead and need to do this job is going to be, uh, I prefer an adjustable wrench with a rubber handle, but I believe it's a 22 or 21 millimeter wrench, a 13 millimeter socket and ratchet, because that just makes it a little bit easier. And you're going to need your laptop along with this guy. Um, most places, most mechanic shops are not going to be equipped to do a job like this and to check this. Most, uh, just about every Volkswagen place will be, or any specialized diesel mechanic will be, that messes with Volkswagen diesels. But, you know, you're going to need this very specific setup along with this laptop as well. And it doesn't have to be any laptop, but you do have to have this software right here, which is a VCDS software. Now, what you're gonna go ahead and do is hook this guy up. I am gonna go ahead and run a scan because I got stuff messed up. You can see we got the blinky light. Plug this guy on in. And we're also going to need to have the key in the on position. And then I'm going to have to connect everything. So we turn that guy on. Once you got everything hooked up, which there's a ton of things for this. You just go to here, test. Okay, everything was found. We're all good to go. Apply. And now we're going to go to control module engine i want to go ahead and read all the fault codes it'll pull everything do 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 all right fault codes uh we know about the alternator and glow plug number two has an electrical fault which we'll check to make sure it's pushed on which it is it's probably one of the old codes let's read from where it was uh it doesn't say where it was from. So, but I'm gonna go ahead and clear all these codes out. By the way, if you guys didn't watch my last video where I went and replaced all of my glow plugs and all of my fuel lines and whatnot, you should go ahead and check that out. I'll leave a link, you know, up there, like click above where that little info I button thingy is, it'll be in there. Now we need to go ahead and turn the engine on. So, cause that's the only way you're gonna be able to check the timing. So clutch in, gosh, it just starts so much better. Now we're gonna go ahead and go back to options, press test, make sure everything's connected, apply. I do it every time. You don't have to do it every time. And now we're gonna go to engine. It's gonna connect everything. Uh, you'll probably see it, you know, not yet, but it is about to start to, to freak out a little bit. We're gonna go into basic settings go all right now if you come into here see how your glow plug lights blinking it's normal don't worry about it now we're going to go into tdi timing if you look right here you'll see the one that i currently have highlighted is the 1.9 r4 tdi agr ahf alh that's our motor and this one was uh anything less than april of 1999 so you go down to the one below it you know it's the same little gibberish alh then you see the slash asv anti-shutter valve you know this will be greater than the date of 05 1999 so we're going to select that one it does say currently that the engine is not warm enough. We're not too, too worried about that. Right now I have a little bit of a cloud configuration right here, but seen this on a few videos where it talks about this timing and that's why I really want to do a timing video. If you look, everything's around this red line or more towards this red line. Uh, it is currently not in time. Now, whenever, you know, it says result, engine not warm enough, whatever, it will be warm enough in just a few moments. This should be right around this blue line right here. This green line, you're too advanced. The red line, you're too retarded. And the blue line, you are just right. So that's where you need to be. So I'm gonna go ahead and shut this program down real quick because even if I touch the throttle right now, this whole thing will mess up. I'm gonna go ahead, go drive it around real quick. 
Uh, also make sure that there are still no more leaks in the fuel system. And then we're gonna come back and I'll show you guys how to check the timing again with the engine warm. And then we'll go ahead and adjust the timing. Now these engines aren't really that much of a pain in the butt to go ahead and get to operating temperature, mostly because their operating temperature is so low. It's like 80 degrees Celsius, which I don't necessarily know what that is in Fahrenheit, but I'll put it down there. All right, so it should be warmed up enough after about two to three-ish miles of driving, um, you know, steady cruising or accelerating, which accelerating is really what heats this thing up. So we're gonna go ahead and pop the hood yet again, plug all this stuff back in and check the timing now and see if it's nice and warm. And just like before, plug in the USB, option, test, everything's good, apply, select the module, engine, it's gathering all the info, boom. Okay, basic settings and leave it at group 000, go. All right, where are we at for coolant? Coolant temperature is still down. Maybe it's hot enough. There we go, okay, it's good enough. And you see right here, it says timing within spec, but uh, but retarded, but slightly retarded. It keeps jumping between slightly retarded and retarded. So what we're gonna go ahead and do is advance the timing because it needs to be advanced. And with the timing being retarded, that means the uh, injectors are putting the fuel in a little too late which could go ahead and cause issues with acceleration, being low on power, and more fuel consumption. So we're gonna go ahead and shut the car off. You have to close all of this out because you're gonna have to reset it all every freaking time. Let's go ahead and shut the car down and I'll show you guys how to go ahead and adjust the timing. In order to get access to the front of the injection pump right here to change it, all you gotta do is pop off this cover right here, which as you can see is not a hard cover to get off. Just like that. Put that guy down there. We will not put that back on until absolutely last. Now, if you come and you look in here, this is the front of your injection pump. Uh, there are three 13 millimeter bolts on it, and then there's that one big bolt. You're gonna loosen up those three 13 millimeters. Do not take them out, just loosen them like still leave them a little bit snug of sub sorts and then we're going to put this wrench on it and we're going to give it a slight little bump now the way that you know which way to go this is very simple to advance the timing you're going to tap it towards the front of the car to retard the timing you're going to bump it towards the back of the car makes sense advance you move forward retard you move back easiest way to remember it easiest way to do it so let's go ahead and loosen all of these guys up and make sure not to change it like too dramatic. You'll probably end up dropping yours too. We're really close to being within spec, so we really don't have to adjust it too much, but we still have to adjust it some. Of course, everything is hot right now, so that doesn't make this any easier. Now that our bolts are loose, we're gonna go ahead, take our wrench, our adjustable. I'm gonna show you why I like this rubber handle. We're gonna put this on here, okay. And now, just a little. And now we're gonna go ahead and tighten everything back up and see if that was enough. It really is like tiny, tiny little movements like that that will change the timing. And you'll be very surprised at how much it will change the timing. Like for all I know, it might be too advanced. Now, let's go ahead. We still have our computer hooked up. Let's turn it back on. I'm hoping that we are within spec because I really don't want to do it again. And I didn't change it enough. Well, let's do it again. There we go. Now I know for a fact we definitely got some movement out of that because I heard it. And I'm hoping that tiny little bit of movement was just enough to do what we wanted to do. Still retarded. So if you see, we're still a little out. I guess it's going to take a little bit more than what I gave it. Maybe one more hit. Uh, but you want it to be jumping around right here. Realistically, you don't even want it to be jumping around quite as much as what I have. I mean, I'll put on the cloud and you can see exactly how much is jumping around. But we essentially want this cloud right here to be right here. Because then we know that our engine is running exactly the way that it needs to. So let's do this again. Yeah, what you're doing is 
the bolts attached to this cog wheel thing for the timing belt. And that nut that you're turning is the actual shaft of the injection pump. So what you're doing is you're changing the relationship between wheel, pulley, cog, whatever freaking thing is, and the actual shaft of the injection pump. Um, this is only something that you need to do on mechanical diesels on the nowadays ones, or realistically anything after like, I wanna say 2005. You don't really have to do this anymore because there's not really much mechanical anything as far as diesels go now. Ha <laughs> ha see, look dead on slightly advanced that is exactly what we need right there see the the cloud right here how it's right around this blue line that is exactly what you want in fact this is actually dead dead on it's a, a little slightly advanced at some points but i'd rather have slightly advanced in this situation uh, i'm going to be completely honest with you guys a big reason why i wanted to make this video is because Whenever I first did this on my Beetle, there was no real information out there on how to use this guide. And I'm a dipshit and I wasn't paying attention to the results button here. And I literally brought this line all the way up to here and ran it like that for six months, which thankfully I didn't have any issues, but that might also be why my engine died. <laughs> Who knows? But we are spot freaking on. This is perfect. This is exactly what we want. And you can actually see as field temperature is stabilizing, that's going into a straight line and you can see that it's spot breaking on so this is really great yeah see look it's going dead on to slightly advanced slightly advanced and i think i saw slightly retarded yep see slightly retarded once so it is dead on exactly where it needs to be um realistically yours shouldn't be jumping around quite as much as this it should be jumping around significantly less I think there might be something wrong with my injection pump. I'm not actually sure. I have another injection pump, but the damn thing runs, so I really don't care. So yeah, that is how you adjust your timing on your Volkswagen ALH TDI. You could also do it for several other motors with that as well that are also mechanical. I'm not exactly sure which ones, but there's a whole bunch that you could check. So that's how you do it, guys. Um, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a big thumbs up. If you're stopping up by for the first time, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And uh, I hope to see you guys around for the next video, which by the way, we're installing a mechanical boost gauge in the next video because I am sick and freaking tired of this. I think it's a pro sport, whatever Evo gauge that's fully electrical. I thought it was cool. It looked cool, but I can't see it for crap. And now it's just malfunctioning like crazy. So anyways, guys, I'll see y'all later. Also, don't forget to put your timing cover right there and back on right here. It goes on the exact same way that it came off.